I'm Stephen Gill and I'm the operations manager. I am in charge of the general day-to-day -day running of the civils and surfacing arms of the business. And I do 60% of the invoicing, 60% um, of the pricing, as well as everything else. Before the general, they, the company was generally a house building operation before, so they did a lot, a lot of house bashing, so a lot of new estates, roads. But the only problem was they had all of their eggs in one basket, and especially now with Brexit and everybody don't know what's really going to happen. They brought me along uh, because to sort of push it into different markets, which we have been, we, we're doing, uh, we've been picked up works with a company called Talent, which we're putting fiber optic into remote areas of Devon. And so, you know, the business is going into different, different sectors. Yeah. It's, a, it's only, it's a contract we've only just recently started doing in the last month, but it's taken us seven months to be able to get onto their procurement system and we've been audited and we've had to up our game in how we run and systems we've got in place. Um, so we've done all that behind the scenes and now they, they want us to, to, to do it. And the more we started, even though we've only been doing a month, it's opened up other doors into other revenue streams that you wouldn't normally get because you have to be on this certain procurement package to be able to open all those doors to all those works and that's where we are. The company I worked for before was the complete opposite even though it was still a surfacing and, and uh, civil engineering uh, I was contracts manager for them for 15 years um, but it was mainly they had all their or 80% of their work came directly from Devon so it was a totally different now we're on the Devon framework here as well but for civil engineering and it just opens up the more frameworks you're on. It's just different revenues, different ways of earning money. I can only speak in my from my own personal. I would the company I was with before I was with for 13, 38 years. So I left school. You know, I left school and I stayed with them for thirty eight years. And I didn't need to leave, but it was a case of if I don't I can sit here and just just do my job or I can go and try and make a difference somewhere else. And so I've come here to make a difference. And yeah, you can, if you come to work for, for us, you can make a difference because, you know, we are always, you know, we our contracts managers are 28 and 30, which relatively young for the, the type of industry we're in, but they've got the drive. They just need a steady in hand, hence why I'm here to push them in the right direction, but they do everything. Yes, yeah, I believe so. It's good. We play golf, we do everything. You know, we have lots of, you know, today's my birthday and they're doing whatever they're doing, but, you know, we they, we generally play golf once every two weeks and they have competitions to see who's better and whoever loses got to buy everybody breakfast. I lose a lot, I buy a lot of breakfasts. And that's just the way it goes. That's just the way it's working here. A very happy place to work for. <coughs> Generally, Devon Tower Masters is split. It's basically split. So we've got two contracts managers that sit underneath me. And we've got a contracting division and we've got civil engineering. The civil engineering, we do everything from, like I've said before, fiber optic, broadband, curbing. We've got um, a project we've got down in Tor Bay. At the moment where we're putting in 400 square meters of granite footpaths and pavings so we've got very diverse on that side we can be hedge clearing for Devon County Council one day and the next day we could be digging out a ditch so that's one revenue the other side is surfacing and we've got we run two pavers and a number of gangs on Hanley work. So we've got on the surfacing side, we've possibly got five gangs where we've got a paving gang out constantly, four Hanley gangs going out, and they can be doing anything from footpaths to major highway works. So that's how it works. Basically, it's split, and that's what we do. And I sort of sit in the middle, pulling strings from one side to the other and making sure that both managers speak to each other. So 
surface in neat civil so that it's covered and the other way around and then going out doing stuff like this and trying yeah. to find new work. It's changed. When I started in the industry, one of the reasons I come in the industry, everything was done on a handshake. And you could go and meet someone, shake their hand, and that deal was done. They wouldn't Welsh on it. You just had to turn up and do the work. Nowadays, it's you're dealing with a bank of QSs who are controlled by accountants, and it's very difficult. You've got to be on top of your game 24-7 to make sure that you're fulfilling their expectations of what they want and so that we can get paid for the, the day's work we do and that's where the challenge is yes we have to be because we we're not big we're not the company i turned i came from to work here turned over 50 million a year we turn over between eight and ten so cash flow for us even though we're turning over that amount of money, we still we can't. We've got to make sure that we we hit our targets and in invoicing dates and everything to make sure that we got the revenue coming in. We haven't got another arm of the company that can bolster us up in the hard times, or you know, we've got a couple of months where payers are a little bit slower. It's not a problem here. You've got to be on top of your game all the time. I hope so, but I think we should. House building has been very good for us. But like I said before, we've had all our eggs in one basket. No, we've got to diversify and you've got to... 10 years ago, you could do that. Nowadays, you can't. You've got to put your... Split your yearly work over a number of revenue streams. You can't just rely on one major revenue stream anymore because if that any turn of that market happens, then it sort of can bring the company to its knees. Not directly, but just like if you're in house building at the moment, there's a lot of indecision. They all say that they want to build hundreds of houses, but nobody's really buying them because they, people don't know what's going to happen. If we leave, we don't want to keep on putting it to Brexit, but if we don't want to leave, people are a bit scared about making a commitment for 25 years. And I can understand that. So the house market is slowing down a little bit. So... If that slows down, our revenue slows down. So we've got to find other work elsewhere. Me and Nigel, we, we, we do all the estimating. We do all the invoicing. So we're at it from sort of grade, you know, cradle to grave. A job comes in, either me or Nigel will price it. We then give it to the contracting team. We oversee that, even though it's from a senior management point of view. And then at the end of the job, it comes back to us to invoice or on a monthly basis. So we're all, we, we never ever, where I was before, there was a suite of estimators and they, you would only ever see it when it became a contract and came into my office. Now you're, you're speaking to somebody on the phone and then you're with them 24 seven until the end of the job and you basically hand over a piece of paper and say, there's your drive or, there's you, this is what we've done. It all depends on your setup. It, it's, it works well here, it works well for us because we're that medium sized company where we can do it and control it. If we got much bigger, you probably would have to have estimators, QSs, because it would get, you just, two people couldn't do it. If we stay the size we are, we can, can grow a little bit in different directions, but the amount of work coming in to estimate and price over then managing it, then invoicing it at the other end. It's, we, we're happy, we've got a good workload. We just do what people ask us to do. I know it sounds really corny and whatever it is, and you could say, you know, but people come to us, you know, I went to a drive this morning, what their expectations of what they want, I've got to try and decipher from them. You know, they just say, oh, I want a nice looking drive. Or I went to one yesterday, I don't want it black, I want it gray. So, you you know, you've got to try and make what they want. And, it is, and we just do what it says on the side of the tin. You know, we turn up, we give them a good price, we give them good service. And then hopefully they'll go on and sort of sing our praises 
because a lot of the work we do is word of mouth and then we get repeat custom and that's is that's it there is no big we haven't got a strap line you know we could have you know paving the way ahead or built on solid principles but we, we, we haven't we we are we just turn turn up give a good service and then disappear